Throughout this project, we've realized how important of a gauge this snowboard shop is for local snowboard communities. The shop is more than just a place where you go to buy your gear. It's a place to go for inside information, human interaction, and the community center, and a pulse of the current culture of snowboarding in that area. 84. When it comes to core shops like a Milo Sport, it's like they're there cultivating the culture of snowboarding. They're supporting kids, right? And giving them opportunities to have their dreams come true of being a pro snowboarder. Thank you. Milo essentially gave me a huge springboard, you know, something to visualize support and what it looked like. And they, they nurture the community, they nurture you know, young kids come through there, start working there, they level up, there may be a manager, and then they go off to these brands. And like, I've seen that cycle through Milo Sport, and that's so important, because that's the community, and that's the, the rich history that snowboarding now has, is because is of shops like that, and so they're very important. You know, snowboarding was a small facet of resort life. So, when you were out on the hill, you were outnumbered, you know, 15 to 1. So coming to the shop just provided you more of like a lifestyle, a culture. Mm -hmm. Safe haven. Yeah, just a place that you felt at home. This place holds such a cool spot and like, sounds pretty corny, but like the core part of snowboarding, it's like, what snowboarding was built off in a sense of just like being together and riding together and like it kind of takes away from this serious aspect of snowboarding and like dials it into this like cool hobby of riding wood down a hill with your best friends like it's kind of the coolest way to put it We're the shop that all the locals and tourists kind of lean on for our service. Yep. A lot of people don't understand the tech in the boards. A lot of people have problems with their boots and they need help. So like, dude, you can't do that from a website. You can't do that from a video, man. Like you gotta go into a shop, okay. talk to someone who's skilled, who's been doing it for a while and it makes all the difference, man. You can write before you buy, or you have to write before you buy. Yeah. We don't sell just, this is, we don't do that. Yeah, so that's what you do first. You, for the customer, you tell you have to try this board before yeah. you buy it. Yeah. yeah. Every single board. Yeah. Also boots. If somebody comes in and he says, I want to try a new board, I always look on the shoe. And if the boot is old, I say, no, you don't get a board before you don't have a new boot. Most of the people are like, well, what the fuck is this guy doing with me? And then I explain it until they went the first run with the new product. And then I don't have to talk anymore. If he likes it, we won. Yeah. The customer and us. And yeah, it makes a lot of fun. Yeah. Because they come in with a big smile. Like, wow, that board was great. And then they, understand what I want to tell them. Yeah, exactly. I always say, better not too much talk, let them ride. The culture and going to a shop is super exciting for a kid or anybody in the scene or industry because it's a hands-on sport. You go to a place. Uh, plus, you know, there's nothing like looking at a product and picking it up in store, right? It's like, yes, you can order stuff online. It's just, I think in my mind will be exciting. Uh, I don't think that part will ever leave. Will it get shrunk in and will be people be more reliant on online and stuff? Yes. But I don't think the snowboard shop will be forgotten, no. There's so many moving parts in the snowboard industry that aren't just the pro riders you see on your TV or on the films. Like the people that sell snowboards are the guys that you talk to in the shop that have the knowledge about not just one brand, about multiple brands and about different boards they they, they have ridden and they've, they've probably ridden more boards than most pros because they try everything. The brands who really support stores and your brick and mortar, like that's your foot soldiers. Those are the people out there every day 
helping people on vacation, fixing broken ladders and ratchets and tweaking your boots and stuff so that you can ride and have fun. And without that, people need to realize like if you're buying everything online or you're buying from these brands that don't support brick and mortar shops, they're gonna fade away. And then when you walk in with a broken ratchet, it's gonna be like, sorry, bud, you're out of luck. Order it online, we'll see you in two weeks. Snow's not gonna wait for you. Like, so I think shops, also making people feel comfortable. So when they come in and that newbie who's never set foot on a snowboard comes in and doesn't get vibed out and literally feels comfortable and is like, wait a minute, this person trying to sell me gear actually cares about my riding experience and wants me to have fun and be safe out there. It's a two-way street. Like the shops have to do it, the companies have to do it. And that's the only way snowboarding is going to truly survive. If we stop visiting, engaging, and supporting all the layers that make up this beautiful culture of snowboarding that we all enjoy, share, and have fallen in love with, then it'll slowly start to disappear, and the next generation might not be as interested to start to snowboard or have a reason to join this snowboarding community that we all love. So if you want to support snowboarding, go to your local shop, go to your local club, join a nonprofit organization, and at the very least, just go snowboarding with your friends. It's pretty simple. <laughs>